How much are you worth? You're applying for jobs, going to interviews, or better still, networking. What's a reasonable amount of money to ask for or hold out for? In this latest video in my series on salary negotiation, I'm going to show you how employers think, what it looks like from the other side of the table, and what concepts they apply to you. You want me to stand over here? As we've seen so far in this series, there is no right answer to what are you worth, only a conflicting array of opinions. We see this in the real world where one employer doesn't think much of you and will only pay you very little, while another employer will value you much more and pay you substantially better. Now, wait a minute. Most people will have missed what I just said there, or at least the significance of it. There is no scientific way to prove that you are only worth a low compensation. This concept is something that can work in your favor, not in an unscrupulous way, but in a way that can even unlock your full potential. Conversely, this concept is a headache for recruiters. When they approve a new employee's compensation, since there is no right answer, they often have to go with the most defendable answer. Have you ever done a job interview where they tried to find out what your last employer paid you? It's because they want to anchor your value to whatever that number is. Hey, this is not just my opinion. Their previous employer paid them this, and they stayed. Please don't fire me. The stupidest example of this is when you've recently graduated with a degree in something, and they still want to know what you made in your last casual summer job so they can offer you 5% more. As we've seen in this series, never reveal your salary history. Now let me ask you a question you might not have thought about. From the employer's perspective, what's the purpose of compensation or pay? It's to get behaviors. As an employer, what behaviors do I want from my employees? Well, I want them to show up on time, be enthusiastic to do their jobs, follow the company rules, regard their job as a good job, not quit on me, do their job efficiently and effectively, care about the company's goals, try their best to achieve them, be easy to work with and accommodating, be flexible, trainable, and eager to help, and want to apply their creativity and problem-solving abilities. I want people that are going to do this. If I truly believe you're gonna do all this stuff for me, I can't hire you soon enough. Now, personally, I've seen employees who were making six figures who weren't doing any of this. Disgruntled, coming in late, phoning it in, sabotaging their employer. I've also seen volunteers at a charitable organization who were doing all of these and not getting paid. It's easy to get this when you know how. See, what employers want is getting these behaviors. This is what the employee recruitment and selection process is all about. Compensation is just a tool, a necessary evil to assist in getting these behaviors. They prefer not to solely rely on it. Think of internships. You work at a company and typically they don't pay you. So why do you work there? It's because they're compensating you with things other than money. One, you get valuable industry experience to put on your resume. Two, you can hit up your boss and coworkers for letters of recommendation or referrals. Three, sometimes the company will hire you outright when the internship ends. And four, there are countless networking opportunities now that you're on the inside of the business. Now obviously, internships and charities are special cases, and there are some restrictions. Legal restrictions like minimum wage or collective agreements if you're in a unionized environment, these obviously apply. Employers will also have internal restrictions, like pay ranges, since it's weird to have a boss paid less than the employees they're supervising. Market price is another restriction. It's often not as big a deal as many people think. This is simply the average pay for an employee with the same skills and experience in a certain region. If you work a very common job in a certain region, sure. However, for many jobs, truly accurate data is just not discoverable. Besides, many companies pay above or below market price to get what they think are the best employees or the most economical workforce, which is usually not how it works out, by the way. So remember, where the employer has leeway to negotiate compensation, one, they care about getting the right behaviors and they'll pay for that. And two, your value is the perception of your value. There's no absolute factual reason why you're only worth a low number. Always remember, you're highly employable and you're awesome.